Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon for some of you joining us from different time zones. And um, welcome to our Pathwork Village. And we use that word with joy and, and reverence and love because it means that everyone here matters. Everyone here is part of the whole. We don't just say that. We, we come here to bask in that together, the energy and the grace that's here. So we'll wait just another moment and see if anybody else is coming in. And uh, invite you to just, while we're waiting, look at the faces on the screen. Some you've seen before, others maybe you haven't. And just take a moment and, and let in uh, this thought that anything that keeps me separate from any of these people is much smaller than what I have in common with them. And just breathe <sighs> into the safety of that, right? Into the sanctuary of that. In each of us, there's a little bit of all of us. And we carry inside us, as Rumi said, the wonders we seek outside of us. And part of the grace of being here together is when we look at these other faces, we get a glimpse of the wonder that's inside of us and the mirror that these different fellow travelers can be for us. I am the one, you are the one, we are the one. So Rumi tells us you have within you more love than you could ever understand. And we're coming together to have an experience of that now with that grace of being together that Grace, as Anne Lamott says, it finds us wherever we are, but it never leaves us there. Right? So invite us to gently close our eyes, as we say, close the two so the third eye can see better. Feel the invitation to be here right now. If I can be here right now in this present moment, none of my problems will matter. None of my problems will matter. We're going to take a moment here together and just let the breath breathe us. Part of the breath is air coming in. Most of it is really life coming in. Life wanting to be with you just where you are, just as you are. As the breath breathes you, let go of any and all thoughts, just like that. We can all do it for just a few moments, and a few moments is all it takes. Listen to these words from Emmanuel. You are not who you were a breath ago. Inhale and welcome the truth of your being in this moment of now.
And as you exhale, allow, allow all of that to simply die, to fade away. And as you inhale again, breathe in the yes of this moment. As you do this, I promise you, you will heal whatever illness you have. You will comfort whatever sorrow you experience. And you will miraculously so become eternity. If there's any tension or anxiousness in the body, just let it be present. Don't try to analyze it or solve it or make it go away. Just be aware of it and at peace with it. As we let it fulfill itself, it will dissolve on its own. Visualize yourself now out in nature by a stream back against a tree. Feel your roots going down into the earth, mingling with the tree's roots. Visualize your crown chakra going up into the sky in the forest canopy. This is your true nature. This is your actual size in life. So sitting here with our back against the tree next to the stream, you see a stick and you pick it up. Let all your thoughts, any thoughts, all the thoughts go into the stick. Gently place the stick into the stream and watch it float away. You see another stick and you pick it up and let all your emotions, the whole anthill of emotions, go into the stick. All that churning energy in the belly, you know, the third chakra, let it go into the stick. And again, gently place it in the stream and watch it too float away.
just being here in the stillness, noticing the freedom from thoughts. Freedom from emotions. Roots going down into the earth. Energy going up into the sky. Having the experience, this is my true nature. This is who I truly am. Taking your sweet time to come back, no hurry. You can leave your roots right there where they are, going into the earth, your crown right where it is, up in the tree canopy. You're back against the tree. any doubt just feel your hands come down to the earth and feel it there <sighs> our predicament as human beings how easy it is to forget our true nature who we really are and the joy of being here together and helping each other remember So uh, we'll say hello to each other and please say your name and where you are on the planet and just a few words about what you're noticing right now, right in this moment. Anybody can begin. I'm Frank from Richmond, Virginia, United States of America. <laughs> I would say that I came to this meeting feeling a bit anxious and disjointed. And now I feel a lot better after that peaceful meditation. Thank you, Brian. Welcome, Frank. Glad you're here. I'm <clears throat> Esther from Swampscott, Massachusetts, and I noticed that more people had arrived. Welcome, Esther. I'm Beth. I'm from Andover, Massachusetts, outside of Boston. Uh, just really grateful to be here, feeling um, vulnerable and unsettled these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. We welcome this part of you too, Beth. Welcome. Uh, Pat O'Hanlon from uh, Madison, Virginia, here at Seven Oaks. Uh, noticing, uh, noticing a little bit of grief watching my sticks float away. Huh. Mm -hmm. What would we do without those sticks? They've been crutches.
I'm Linda. <laughs> I'm from uh, Bedford, Pennsylvania, USA. Um, I'm here because I got the newsletter and I was sort of in shock and I wanted to connect. I haven't been coming to this very often, but I have path work roots going way back and um, it just felt important to show up. Thank you, Linda. You're a familiar face going way back. I'll go next. Um, Alex and I'm from Harrisonburg, Virginia. And um, I too kind of got on hurried and worried and, and uh, I was hard for me to focus on the meditation but I heard the part about and these are my words I heard you're not all that you're something else mm -hmm. whatever that is and that really helped to help me um, mm -hmm. ground and, um, and and kind of take in a deep sigh or let out a deep sigh mm -hmm. take in a big breath and let out a big sigh that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying Thanks. Ah, anybody else want to take one too? They're great. Ah, yeah. Hello, um, I'm, go ahead, Kay. Okay. Sorry. Oh, go uh, ahead, please. Um, I'm Kay. I'm from Durham, North Carolina, and um, I'm feeling a lot of things. <laughs> um just, just a lot of stuff going on and i'm i'm just uh i, I really really appreciated that meditation brian you're so good at, at this and and this was spot on for me today and so um with all of that i'm now feeling a sense of peace and, and gratitude mm -hmm. I'm glad to see all of you guys and be here with you as well mm -hmm. thank you Kay. glad you came to drink from the well Hi, my name is uh, Nora. I'm from Belgium, the north of Belgium, near the Dutch border. Um, before I came on, I was, I did, I had um, the leftovers of, I was like uh, criticized for some of my traits earlier today. And it was kind of uh, painful um, to be with, but, but good as well. I also feel there's some growth in you know looking at these things without falling apart you know that um just observing that part of me that's um you know that feels that she's gonna die when uh, she's not perfect mm. and uh, so that meditation was very helpful and um i'm i know many of these spaces from because i watched the videos but i've only i think been here once or twice um so but i'm glad to be here be with you all so thank you welcome Nora hello everyone um, I'm Saida from uh, Denmark and um, I feel kind of distracted and disturbed these days and um, um, it was also kind it was difficult for me to uh, to concentrate on meditation so I was still very distracted um, and right now I feel um, impatient and still have this feeling of distraction in me. So Saida, can, would you be willing just to take a moment and let this impatience out? We all have some, right? Like, I don't say anything at once. Like, and anybody else feel your your own here, right? Distracted, impatient, was like, whatever it is. It's like, this is just part of our humanity, right? It's not because we're not perfect. So, if you were to let your impatience say something that would surprise you. If you don't try to control it, what might it say, Saida? I mean, 
just let it come out without you monitoring what it's saying. I just want I just want to be you know impatient. Like just just let me be impatient because mm -hmm. that's 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 where I am. Like yeah. it's like my, it's like my child who is talking right. Yeah. All of you is welcome here. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about this community. It's like a come as you are event, right? Pat. Hi. Um, I've gone through so much this week of frustration and a feeling like I'm unworthy of all the love that comes from you, John. And um, just right up with the places I am, I am beyond impatient and meltdowns and then I see the impact of my meltdowns. And I realize that they almost always come when I'm exhausted, I'm not taking care of myself. And this week I really hit, I put aside a book, writing a book that really matters to me um, 15 years ago because of obligations. And I realized I have to make time for that a little every day. You know, not stopping for a week or a month or whatever, but a little every day. And I started yesterday. Didn't get very far, but I went, I need this. Whether it ever gets done or published or not, I need the work of the speaking from my heart. And I'm grateful for you, John. Do you have anything to say? Well, I'm here. I'm not completely relaxed yet, but I feel like I'm getting there. <laughs> and what helps is this beautiful uh, place we live in, in, in uh, Shenandoah. And I can you know, get look out at the mountain and, and the trees, and I can get to a point where I'm relaxed and uh, at peace. So, um, but right now I'm still kind of working on it. <laughs> if you can tell, it, it, if you could speak about working on relaxing, I don't know whether <laughs> that's, that's the right word, words for it. <laughs> Welcome, John, and, and welcome, Pat. Welcome. Thank you. It's always great to see two of you here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, Kate. Welcome, next. Hello, everyone. My name's Dan Iot, and I am in Richmond, Virginia. And I'm feeling um peaceful and calm for the most part i i noticed though that my stick got caught up in a <laughs> beaver dam just down there a little bit <laughs> far, pretty far down there though so that's where i'm at yeah thank you dan Everybody else is gone, so. Um, my name is Brian, and I'm a tree that's planted in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And uh, occasionally I forget who I really am and start imagining I'm a, you know, neurotic uh, person with uh, chronic illness and uh, limited resources and uh, what's going to happen to me. Yeah. It feels really good to let that go. Um, I was really tuning in uh, 
to the part of me and you, Nora, around the fear of not being perfect. Is that how you said it? Something like that. And uh, Saidi, about your uh, impatience, and uh, I just want to let go of some of my impatience, and it's like this. I want it right now. I want it right now. Give it to me. And I don't even know what it is. Right? Just to, you know, what I love about this work is the freedom not to have to explain ourselves, not to be afraid of where we find ourselves in the moment. Because those things are the very things that keep us from turning to ourself with curiosity and learning something about what's going on at a deeper level that, you know, it's never about the outer issues. Okay. Well, let's say very, very rarely, if your house is on fire, you got to get out of it, right? Okay. So um, I just want to take a moment and, uh, you know, some of you are aware that the uh, Seven Oaks Pathwork Center, where we grew up, many of us, uh, is now in the process of being sold. And, um, you know, I've heard from people shock, dismay, grief. It's, it's like losing somebody you love. It is like a, a death, right? Yet, uh, as we do here, we want to make room for whatever those feelings are in you without it being specific to this particular passage in life, right? Like, because what happens is we get caught up in the outer event where we don't really have any uh, power to change anything. And, uh, and we feel the underlying feelings in a secondary way. We think it's really this losing something is, you know, a part of everyday life. We're, some of us are losing our health. I'm one. Some of us are losing our youth. Right? Our, a feeling like I'll get old one day, but not now. <laughs> so, um, you know, to welcome you here, if you're feeling the grief, just to know that when you say I'm, I'm feeling grief and loss, we can tune right into that from our own grief and loss that we all have, right? It, one of the things here that's different than a process group, in a process group, we work the specific issue. And here in this forum, we're creating more of a uh, spiritual container to let these archetypal feelings that we all have flow. Right. Together, Imagine we visualize we can create a wider riverbed for this archetypal energy, sadness, grief, loss, uncertainty to flow that ends up being more of a struggle in the confines of our own consciousness. So as some of you may have read, uh, I have something uh, to offer today to help with this, which is uh, an understanding that came to me uh, a couple of months ago that we actually have two hearts. Okay. And what I want to do is take a moment and just play uh, a 60 second video to give a sense of what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm having uh, some tech issues here. Hold on. Okay, here we go. We have two hearts, the divine heart, all-encompassing, 
timeless, repletely full with everything and anything, all of human experience of love, connection, peace, contact, and the human heart, a smaller part of us inside the divine heart, that even though it's in this ocean of the divine love in the divine heart, has its limited horizon of doubt, of fear, of isolation, of disconnection and separation. It's this human heart we bring the breath into, like blowing on an ember patiently, one breath after another without counting, catching a tiny spark buried deep down, watching it spread until it bursts into flame. What, what comes up for me with this is that the very gift of the pathwork, these 258 lectures, just an unimaginable treasured chest of teachings, so many of which are you know, life changing. I know this personally, can also keep us busy working. The path work, right? And, and the guide speaks to this directly that go ahead and really pour yourself into the work of looking at yourself, of learning how you got here, right? And at the same time, in the next moment, just let it all go and know that there's something here that's holding you. Something wise and caring and loving, steadfast. Right? No matter how alone we feel at times, right? no matter how separate from life, no matter how frustrated, how hurt, how lost, right? The reality is those emotions are real, yet they're a temporary illusion. Even if we've had them all our life, the guide says they're still temporary, right? So the, this view of the human heart inside this divine heart, really helps me because in my pain, which is a regular occurrence, right? I do feel separate. I do feel all by myself. It doesn't matter who out there loves me or cares about me or, you know, it, it's like, so I'm not, I'm not able to reach out, right? Yet, this visualization, this creative visualization of this part of me with the band-aids and the scars and the stitches being inside this divine heart, it, it brings me right more into that, oh, let me, let me, let me just see if I can feel that. Let me just blow some kindness on this human heart that is really struggling right now. It doesn't want to hear advice. It doesn't want to hear a line from a guide lecture. It doesn't want to hear that uh, this is an illusion. It wants kindness. It wants presence. Okay. 
it, it wants patience. Okay. So, of course, when I'm in it, I can't at times give that to myself. I'm too lost in my conscious identity, right? Yeah, to just stop for a moment and be willing to feel myself inside that divine heart and just bring the breath of that into my human heart. I find that something I'm more and more willing to do. It's a spiritual practice that's completely in me. It is my true nature as much as during the guided meditation when we were sitting with our back against the tree and the roots going down and the crown going up, right? right. So the two hearts help me make it experiential. You know, sometimes for me, when I'm uh, working with someone who's just new to the path work, I can just see their eyes glazing over like, what, what, what is the lower, the higher self? What, you know, compassionate observer, so forth and so on, right? And I realize that um, it's like learning to ride a bicycle by reading a book about it first. I think most of us would say, that's not for me. I could never do all of those things at the same time, right? Yet uh, the experiential part is just like getting on the bike and wobbling down the sidewalk, right? And like, oh, oh, oh wait, then there's something, an ease that comes in within a, you know, a short time. So what I'm inviting us to do here today is to really approach this experientially. And I invite you all just to close your eyes for a moment. And just bring your attention first to the human heart. It has all its doubts, aches and pains, Fear of not being perfect, impatience, anxiety, doubt. And with your eyes still closed, just visualize yourself just, just reaching out and, and through that human heart and, and touching something vaster all around you, all around this human heart. Just be willing for a moment to let in this transformational reality. I am not who I think I am. I am not who I'm afraid I'm not. And then gently opening our eyes and coming back. Does anybody have a, a little taste of this in that moment, right? Like, mm -hmm. Anybody have any um, difficulty or want some help or have any resistance or doubt, right? Like, all of that is welcome here too.
Catherine, I'm just um, having a hard time being present in general. Mm -hmm. And it partly is because I'm in the process of moving. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's just like disruption, energetic disruption everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought it might be helpful just to name that and maybe also just to name what came up for me when you were talking about the pathwork uh, center being sold and just this wave of grief. Uh, if that's okay, just to sort of bring that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, because I, I didn't know that, you know, I, um, I know that Donovan passed and I never met him and I only came through the center once many years ago, but I, I was just like remembering how connected I felt there and how I actually had moved to Virginia <laughs> when I was in graduate school, thinking that I, it was like my internship was going to be my segue into being there. And, and a big part of being there was being, I wanted to be close to the center. So I mean, circumstances brought me back to Boston, but it was just a big wave of like, all oh, right, you know, like I actually felt very drawn there. And, um, um, so it's just sort of remembering who I was and what age I was when I was studying the path work. I think I was in my thirties and it was the deepest, deepest place of connection ever and still is. And uh, so there's so much in my heart for, and what came up for me was this fear. I have no idea who it might be sold in. Just this fear that nobody could possibly you know, that, that something will be taken away, something will be lost. And I don't know anything about what, you know, might happen, but just, uh, and I'm sure there's some big personal thing about that for me, about, you know, like something so precious being so lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> it always feels so hard to be vulnerable in a, a zoom meeting people so far away but uh and i haven't i don't think i've been here in a while but mm -hmm. it's really important for me to bring my myself present yeah mm -hmm. <sighs> it's nice to look around and see people Mm -hmm. Brian, I always appreciate seeing you on a Sunday morning and mm -hmm. really love your leadership and your guidance mm -hmm. and wisdom in your heart. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you, Beth. And just invite us all, uh, any of us have some vulnerability close by, just to really be here with you, Beth. I feel mine right behind my eyes, like, <laughs> and this is my own. It's not just. Uh, being human is so vulnerable. <laughs> and I so rarely feel safe enough to really feel it. And the pathwork is just what a precious, precious gift this community is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else have vulnerability close by here? Just let it gently come up and don't try to think about what it might say. This is a gathering place for all these parts of us. Leave it here, don't take it home. If nothing comes up to say, just let, take a moment and, and just see if you can allow that underlying intense, exquisite vulnerability of being a human being. Uncertainty. 
mortality. Loss. And now feel your back against the tree again. And feel the roots going down into the earth again. Head up into the tree canopy, into the sky again. And you look and you see right next to you a little stone you've never seen before. You pick it up with a sense, this is my vulnerability. And just hold it between your hands for a moment. Feel it in there inside these hands. Just bring it to your heart for a moment. Hold it against your heart. What can happen here when we're together like this is energy that's been bottled up inside of us just moves and flows, right? There are larger forces at work here. And part of that is when we see others have their vulnerability, their emotions, their feelings, Part of us relaxes against the natural self-judgment we have about our own, right? <clears throat> I'd like to say something about um, my vulnerability right now. And, uh, Please. Beth, um, thank you for saying that about um the sale because for me it's a little bit of the elephant in the room and as i did that meditation um what was so beautiful is that the new news about the sale left my heart sort of broken my human heart um and and shaky i mean since thursday night since the phone the zoom meeting i've just been shaking and uh, and it was so nice to feel that broken human heart sort of just in the center of that bigger heart. And I guess it feels like, I mean, I don't know it yet, but I guess I trust that it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, 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 uh, it's just very sad. It's sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. Mm -hmm. I'm sad, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sad. Mm -hmm. Sad. Mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please, Linda. So, since I found out, I've been 
spending time thinking and reflecting about the gifts that have come from Seven Oaks that have been really influential in my life ever since I was there. Um, objective observer. I never, I'm not sure I would have found that myself. Um, and the whole idea that I'm not perfect and that's okay. I'm sure I wouldn't have found that. Um, so uh, there are gifts, um, you know, and the, the, the joy for me is that I have those in my head so that I can walk the path down to the river. I know it's there. Um, I can go to the chapel and be there. Um, and I'm grateful that that has been part of my life. I, I'm trying to, to work generally on this whole idea of <clears throat> change happens and it, life is what it is. I mean, part of that is getting older. Um, and that's been lots of substantial changes for me. So, um, not resisting it is a, a big deal that, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to be in space where others understand the significance of the, the change. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. <clears throat> I, um, what comes up for me is a lot of fear. Um, <clears throat> I, I won't go into a personal story, but like um, people's roots are in their land. Like there's divine, you have divine sparks while you're there. <clears throat> and it's, um, it's my belief. And like we all immigrate many of us immigrated from our roots and it's like a cut you're cut off from the place where you walked so maybe that's the significance of it <clears throat> and what somebody does with it next i don't know like i know i did it didn't i know i had too much fear and anger when the personal story happened to me. And if I had known path work back then, I wouldn't have felt so abused. <clears throat> but there is a, another way to just realize non-attachment, I guess. Um, attachment and non-attachment. But it's, <clears throat> to me, I guess I have fear as well as the grief of I've never been to Seven Oaks, but I can just feel the grief. Yeah. yeah. Grief is a powerful thing. Grief and sadness, we've heard those two. These are real deep human feelings. They're not emotions that are just artifacts of our defense system, right? It's an essential part of being a human being. We're gonna feel those two. And what we're learning in this work is to just be with them instead of resisting them then feel that that grief feel that sadness feel that loss there's actually a sense of well-being that comes and really just oh, fully dropping into it right I've been struck by this uh, line from Thomas Merton. He says, uh, the way we create suf suffering is by resisting. 
suffering, right? We end up creating more suffering. Like to try to resist sadness is going to make us crazy. And the resisting grief, right? And the beauty of just being able to say it here, I'm feeling sadness, I'm feeling grief. I could feel hearts opening up here, Esther, as you were saying that, Alexandra, as you were saying that. Anybody else want to speak to any of their own flows and stirrings here without having to go into any story about where it came from or um, the, the simpler you can just state it, the more it can flow in you right now in our holding of you here. I also have been feeling um, sadness and grief, and it was much more intense than I understood why until today in this meeting, um, I realized that in many ways, Seven Oats represents home to me. And so the sadness, I think, and the grief comes from the sense that I'm I'm losing my home. Um, but what I also recognized is that my home, my true home, and this comes, you know, translated from your two hearts, Brian, is not in the externals, but it's here. And so that's what I'm going to take from today with me and let that process through me. So I appreciate being here and all of you being here. Thank you, Kay. Jane, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry I was late. You, you know, what comes to my mind, um, and I may feel totally different because um, I'm planning on being at Seven Oaks in June, but it, it's, it's the connection that I have made with people that, you know, that I feel, I don't know, like the most grief about, you know, um, not so much the physical property, just the connections that were a possible because of seven oaks um yeah that's what comes to my mind i'll probably cry like a baby <laughs> and i'm there <laughs> thank you jane that i don't mean to laugh about it it's just because grief is it, it it feels pain and grief is is oh. hard for me to feel i noticed that thanks Thank you, Jane. So um, in a moment, we're going to go into breakout rooms and have a short of ex experience of the two hearts. Right? And each person will take, a, uh, you know, five minutes or so. And uh, a couple of things I want to say. Remember the gift of this visualization of the two hearts is the human heart doesn't have to know what to do or how to make it better or how to figure it out, right? The human heart can just feel whatever it's feeling. So in the exercise, first person just takes a moment or two and connects with their human heart and, and just Take a few moments and, and say whatever is in that human heart, whatever it is, again, without having to explain the cause and effect or the story, just what the feeling is like. And then taking a breath and in the presence of the others, see if you can bring your awareness to this divine heart that is you, that is holding you, right? And the superpower is the visualization, the creative imagining of it. The guide says, 
for anything to be manifest, it has to be visioned first. So just to, you know, vision this human heart inside this larger divine heart and take a few moments and just soak it up. <sighs> Welcome back, everybody. And uh, Sheila has joined us for the glide path into our closing. I'm just taking a moment and feeling all this energy that is coming in right now from what you've been doing. Give it a soft place to land in you so that it can follow you back into life, right? Like... And let's just see if anybody has something to share about what happened for them. Remember the guide says, a glimpse, a glimmer is enough of this larger experience, right? Like, and that's what we're bringing our breath to is that little spark of that glimmer. It's the spiritual practice of it. Yeah. I'm just going to say a quick goodbye because I have somebody someplace else I need to be, but good to be with you. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who wasn't able to connect with the divine heart? It's it's not a failing. It's just something. Maybe there's some help here for you with that. Like, right? Remember, we think we have to do it to have this connection. This connection is already here. What the visualization of the two hearts is inviting us to do is realize that no matter what the human heart is dealing with, we're already held in this larger ocean of love, really. You know, within our own experience. Right? Like, shifting, as the guide says, our identification of the spiritual self something the guide says over and over yet that sounds kind of vague and metaphysical i used to hear that and go well how do i do that <laughs> which button do i press right so I'll, I'll share you know i noticed that in the beginning i was i was speaking about my big heart and my closed little heart and then i realized that it is actually my big heart that really sees and feels the pain of my little heart oh, yeah wow. you know, so you know there was um there was like a union of, of the two that thank mm -hmm. you for my my big heart sensitivity mm -hmm. yeah yeah honoring your own feelings right like the the divine heart was really honoring jane's experience on the human plane right not trying to give her advice or tell her she shouldn't do that or not tell her which lecture to read right i see you smiling nora yeah i'm smiling because um well i i managed to not not be present whilst you were explaining how what how to do the exercise or the, the breakout room. And then um, well, whilst I was in there, I, I totally missed the point of what, the, what we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had a nice chat with the two ladies and mm -hmm. listened to their, yeah. Right. Thank you. Remember, this is a, actually a deep awareness practice. So it's not getting it right away is it, it is okay. It, yet, if, if we're willing to come back to it and practice it again, the, 
any of these spiritual practices, the results are guaranteed, right? And it starts with visualizing the human heart inside the divine heart. What we learn in this work is anything we visualize with conscious, positive intentionality, we can have. It's, it's a superpower given to human beings. Right? So I'm right in the middle of the greatest shit storm in my life, right? And you know, I can just take a moment and let the breath come in and visualize with my positive intention and even like almost desperation, this divine heart holding me just as I am in all this turmoil and distress. I can have that. You know, I question comes up in me. I mean, I know that a lot of my human heart actions and emotions are on a subconscious level. I'm just curious if some of my divine heart expressions are also on a subconscious level because sometimes I'm just thinking, you know what, I can't connect with my divine heart. Mm -hmm. But I know that I'm doing stuff along the way that really is yeah. coming from my divine heart. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, probably just not waking up to it in the moment, yeah. you know. So Frank, uh, what you're saying, we, we hear this word, our shadow, right? Which is our unconscious. And most, most of us have this idea that our shadow is all this dark stuff. Yet there's a lot of our light, our divine nature that's in our shadow as well, right? That's, that's why we're learning not to judge anything that's down there because we don't want to overlook the gold, right? So, you know, uh, what this dude named Jesus a while back, he said, ask and you shall receive, right? Like, like I want to feel this. I want to be aware of this. I want to, I want to just see this around me right now, right? That, that single-minded, pure, positive intentionality is never denied, right? Yet again, it may just come in like a glimpse, right? Yet now we got to really go for that glimpse. <sighs> Blow on it, you know, get the fire going. Right? So, uh, you know, that where the spiritual practice of that comes in, uh, I want to go back to the, the video here and, um, you know, letting that breath uh, no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, but you remember from the video, there was this breath coming in, blowing through the heart. Here it is. Right? This is our positive intention. A blow on that human heart and help the divine heart bring it on fire. You know, really, the the path we're getting, its essence, it, it's trying to help us see that wherever we're stuck, wherever we're struggling, we're lost in our mind. We, we just are disconnected from this true nature that, that we've talked about here often, because it's so important for us to remember we're spiritual beings on a human journey. Right? And all of heaven and all of earth is here to help us. Yeah. Yet just knowing that is not enough. We're really called to create experiences of that. Like even a brief experience of that is unforgettable. Now we want more. How can I do that again? What was I doing the last time I got that? Let me do that again. Right? 
So, you know, some of the um, teachings that I was sitting with around that is, I, you know, <laughs> Alan Watts says, Nirvana is right where you are, provided you don't object to it, right? Byron Katie says, everything happens for you, not to you. So when we're lost in that human heart, we think it's all happening to us. And that's why we want to make that connection to the divine heart so we can learn the very thing that is our unique one-of-a-kind lesson to learn, right? That's why we feel where we most feel stuck is where the great opportunity is for that next unfolding into I'll say those words again, pleasure supreme, bliss. Yeah. That is our birthright. Every one of us here, it's our birthright. And as Pema Chodron says, this is only the blink of an eye away, right? And that's part of my hope is with this visualization of the two hearts that will help create some of that so let's go back inside as we're coming in for a landing let the eyes gently close and whatever awareness you can bring to your human heart just as it is poor thing bless its heart as we say down here in the south Now, for just a pure moment, I'll let the creative visualization go out and include the divine heart all around the human heart, holding it. And as you listen carefully, you hear this voice that you recognize, and it's saying, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. And gently opening your eyes again, and as some of you are already doing, take yourself off mute and let your hands come up and let that voice you heard come through you and the others on the screen here. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I'm here with you, Sheila. I'm here with you. I'm here with you, Esther. I'm here with you. And just let it come you. in too. That like here with you. people are here with you. Mm. Yeah. Here with you. I'm here with you, Pat. I'm here with you. Thank heavens. I don't know what I would do on my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. And we're going to have our coffee and donuts. Anybody wants to stick around? Thank you. Great to thank have you here today. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks Brian. Thanks, Brian. Good to see you, Stephen. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you.